we will now define the shape of the PCB. This can be done in different ways. For example, you can draw the shape of the PCB according to the data sheet of the case. Of course, manufacturers of cases uh, usually offer 3D bodies, 3D models for the cases. And within these 3D models, also a 3D model of the PCB, uh, which fits into this uh, case, is offered. And we will use that to define the shape of the PCB. That's the basic uh, PCB that uh, we will now reshape. First of all, we will place the 3D body. All the 3D models that Altium accepts should be saved in step file format. Here I will use the EMC Workshop PCB step model and I will place it in my <coughs> design. So that's the 3D model. Now I should place it on layer top component outline which was defined previously for 3D bodies as well. Okay, let me show it in 3D view. So that's the model of our PCB and now I have to shape the, our, my PCB according to that model. So what I will do, I will go to design, board shape and here I will define the shape from 3D body. First I have to pick a 3D body, so I will click on it and the next I have to choose the face of this 3D body which will define the PCB shape. So the only face that I can select here is the one which is already selected. So I will click on it and now I will get these options. Align face with PCB board surface, align face with bottom PCB board surface or do not modify model position. So I will use the third one because I don't want to, this 3D model to be moved vertically. And I will hide all the design rule check errors because if you align the PCB to that 3D model, usually you will get errors uh, of the collision, of the 3D model collision. So I will hide these errors. Okay, now pressing 2 again, this is the shape of the PCB. And now, of course, I can delete this uh, PCB 3D model because I already have the definition of this design. And um, what else? Well, what I can also do is I can uh, draw a board outline according to this shape. So I go into uh, design board shape and I select option create primitives from board shape. And I will select the width of this line. Let's say I select um, eight mils maybe. Uh, layer would be board outline layer. And then I have these four options. I can include cutouts. Our board doesn't have cutouts, only two holes. I can also include layer stack regions. Um, and um, this uh, layer stack only has one region, so I don't wouldn't uh, use this option. The route tool outline means that I can, uh, in, instead of placing the tracks or the lines at the mid point or uh, at the in this, mid section here, I can route around it so that layer lines would be placed outside this border, not on the middle, which of course um, can be useful for uh, defining the root paths for the tools which will cut out the PCB. But the manufacturers usually require the design to be made in such a way that the, all the tracks, regardless their width, would just define the the as they were zero width, which means that the definition of the border is at the midpoint of the tracks. So I will not use route tool outline. And I could delete existing features on that layer, which of course I don't have none here, so I will not choose that. Okay, pressing OK. Now this is the track and the features that are defining the shape of the PCB on the board outline layer. And that's uh, more or less it. And um, in such a way we have defined uh, this board shape. Now, the next thing which could be maybe useful here if you check this PCB is to actually apply a original 3D body of the case that we will use. So I will go again to the 
design, oh sorry, to place 3D body and I will actually place the 3D body of the case. And that's the 3D body of the case, which seems a little bit awkward since it's turned uh, on the in the opposite direction. So I will choose this body and now I can go into properties and here, I hope that I can, uh -huh, now it is chosen, okay. I can uh, rotate it around X, Y and Z axis. So rotating around X axis would mean in this direction, uh, the Y axis in this direction and Z in that direction. Okay, so I have to rotate it through the X axis, according around the X axis first, 90 degrees, okay. Then around Y axis, maybe 90, no, the other way, minus 90, okay. And around Z axis, I would turn for 90 degrees as well. So I suppose this is quite all right now. I will try now, now, now to fit it to this board, which is quite hard. So what I will actually do, I would then go into 2D and try to put, see, this would be maybe easier, but I need some snap points on this 3D body so that I know where to snap to this two uh, shape of the PCB. So I'll go now to the 3D view again and I will place these snap points to this 3D body. So I will go to the function called tools 3D body placement and I will add snap points from vertices. Okay, first I have to click the step model which is that one and then I'm moving my, my cursor around and it will snap to all different uh, all different vertices. So maybe I first snap to this. Of course, I have to so sort of um, align. Okay, that's the midpoint. Okay. Now I will press it here. The problem now, as you may see, is that even if I place the snap point, I don't see it. Well, the problem is that it's not visible. So I'll go back to the view configuration here and under the system colors, I can find the option 3D body reference points, custom snap points, and I will view them. Now I see the snap points, which is much better. So going again, I will use the function tools, 3D body placement, add snap points, and I will continue. Clicking first, I choose the 3D body, and then whenever I click now, I will actually select or define the snap point. Okay, I will do that as well here. Okay, I have to really align perfectly that I find the correct vertice to click on it. Now, what about the uh, holes? Maybe that hole here. Well, I can maybe find the midpoint of that hole, which could be this one. But also, I could also try to do it differently. If I cannot find the midpoint point of a hole, I can actually use this function which defines a point between two points. I can press space and now I get mode which I will define one point out of two. So first I will click on the edge, maybe here, and then going around I can click on other edge and the point will be placed in the middle, like that. So this is also an option. Here I will try the same thing pressing once, twice, and the midpoint is placed in the between those two. Okay, what about this opening here? That one should be also marked in a way. So I will go again I, uh, and I will place the snap points here. So add snap points, clicking once, and I will place them. And it's enough that I place maybe one here trying to be as precise as possible. Like here one, and there, and there, and there. Okay, I think I have enough snap points now. I will go to 2D. Okay, I see those snap points are now visible quite well, and I will now place all the the 3D body according to my design. And I will try to, okay, now when I press mouse or uh, uh, add the snap point, it will actually snap to it. 
and now I will place it in the middle of this hole. And all the rest are placed as well. I think they are placed quite okay. Let me see in the 3D now. It seems just fine. The PCB is now placed very well. Okay, going now to the 2D. Um, let me check um, how can I mark this hole, this opening in the middle, so that I can mark on the PCB that I have a space for higher components there. Okay, I can do that on another layer. Maybe I can just make make up a layer, add mechanical layer and name it maybe, um, I don't know, opening, whatever. And I can now draw on that layer. So I will go to this opening layer, opening, and I can draw tracks. And I will draw them according to these snap points. Now the problem is I am on another layer and whether I I don't have any snapping, which is quite unusual, I would say. So first of all, maybe I can select uh, I don't know, a larger grid or something, but it will probably not help. Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't help. Um, well, okay, let me try another way. I will go here and I will check what the objects for snapping are. And actually here I can find 3D body snap points and turn them on. Let me see now. Does it work? No, it doesn't. Well, what else? I can go to click somewhere out and go to properties. And at these properties, I actually have these snap options. And I can select all layers snap points. Now, I think the snapping will be possible. Yes, it is. Clicking once, going there tab, maybe I can shift space, shift space, okay, I have to snap perfectly, again, okay, it was not perfect, now it is, again, space, snap perfectly, and going to the last, snapping, okay, my shape of the PCB is defined now, and that's actually shape of this opening. So within this opening, I could have higher components. Uh, maybe even um, if I go back to the 3D model, uh, if I'm more precise, actually only in this area on bottom layer, we can have uh, um, components that are higher or even components uh, at all because here outside this area components cannot be placed on bottom layer but on top layer they could be placed anywhere. So I could actually uh, then use another feature called uh, keep out layer to do that and actually I will show it later. Maybe now we don't need these snap points anymore so we can hide it. So going back to the view configuration I can easily just hide the snap points and then we will not be able to see them. And of course, also this um, 3D body uh, features on 2D maybe are not necessary to, to be shown. So I will go to this view options here and I will hide 3D bodies. Okay, now I don't see them anymore and actually it, do it doesn't matter because in 3D view, I see all the 3D parts that are uh, available and um, it's as well useful and here I have prepared PCB. So um, I shown you how to shape the PCB according to the 3D model. Of course there are other ways of doing it. Uh, it depends what kind of input files uh, you have. Uh, maybe if you don't have the shape of the PCB then you have to uh, take the shape of the 3D model itself. To, to, to shape it uh, accordingly, which of course would take a little bit more effort to do.